This is the 10x Your Business Podcast with Itai Paz, session number 14. Break it down. Welcome to the 10x Your Business Podcast, where it's all about 10x your business results. Get more clients, make more money, and have more free time. And now, your host, entrepreneur, best-selling author, trainer, and international speaker, Itai Paz. Welcome back to the 10X Your Business Podcast. I'm very excited about our guest today, Jeff Schwartz. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jeff, you know, for the people who don't know you, uh, you, you are the star of uh, the reality show, The Liquidator, and I, I would say you're probably the best negotiator I've ever seen. So, you know, how do you define what you do? You know, <laughs> everybody likes to buy and sell and everybody likes to win. And... uh or not always winning. It's always about getting a deal. So it doesn't matter whether you're buying a, you know, a ten dollar, you know, widget, or buying a hundred thousand dollar car. It's all the same thing. You all, you all, everybody wants to always save money. So basically, what I do is I look at stuff that people leave behind or see an opportunity, and I go for it. So you know, I said you're the best negotiator I've seen. Uh, do you regret any deals that you've done in the past, like buyer remorse? You know what? Every time you do a deal, if you didn't have buyer, you know, if you don't have buyer's remorse, you wouldn't be human. So uh, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. The thing is, is that people go to a casino and they, you know, they empty out five hundred dollars pretty quick. I do the same thing, but with inventory. And uh, you know, yes, I have buyer's remorse the minute I do it. And uh, the, the bottom line is, is you have to stay, you know, focused and just go for it. Amazing. I've seen some of the deals. You know, you have amazing deals, and and I think you you probably is there anything you never bought, or what is the craziest thing you ever bought? Uh, the, one of the craziest deals I ever bought was on the show. It was a bunch of crazy pumpkins, uh, and I didn't. After I sold those pumpkins for next to nothing, I had about ten or fifteen different camps call me, and they say we use these pumpkins for different venues. Why didn't you hold these pumpkins? I'm thinking, are you crazy? I didn't even think anybody would buy them. Um, but one of the craziest deals ever is I bought 40,000 vibrators at one time and I had a 53 foot trailer full of every sex toy you could possibly imagine. And, uh, I had to get a guy in there and and sort them out. And he says, well, how do you want me to sort these things? I said, I don't know, put this one with this one and that one with that one. He says, well, I meant by color. And I said, I guess so. Do what you have to, you know? So that, uh, was kind of crazy. And yes, we did have a, one of the big, biggest sex stores probably in all of British Columbia. Amazing. And and how do you decide if you should buy it or for how much? Well, you have to, you see, you have to remember if, if somebody is offering you something, you have to ask, why is he offering it to you in the first place? You know, and what's the reason behind it? Sometimes you might, a guy might have 10,000 video cassettes and tell you, you know what, these things are worth $30 each, but now I'm looking for a dollar. Well, when was the last time you used the video cassette? Yes, there are people that actually buy them. But you have to remember why he's peddling it. And, and turning that around, if a guy's got a stereo store full of, uh, you know, TVs and anything that you want, listen, I'm in a situation. I got to leave the country. I got to go. You got to give me an offer and take it. So you look at each situation different. You go, okay, how do I move it? I can tell you everybody's trying to peddle something, and there's usually a reason behind it. If the, if the person's, you know, you, you know the person needs to sell it because he's got to be out of the place in 24 hours or 40 hours. You're studying their needs. What is it that they need? What is their motivation? And why are they trying to sell it? And what, and then when you do take a chance on something, for example, I just bought two days ago. As a matter of fact, I paid for it today. I just bought uh, a deal on um, three million dollars at retail of Fendi sofas. The price of this sofa was one sofa in this deal was nineteen thousand five hundred euro FOB Italy. Meaning that right. SOFA would probably land about $31,000 Canadian. The guy that bought it was another liquidator. They got 15 stores. He phones me up and he says, you know what, Jeff, I want 140000 I said, you know what, Mark? If I bring this to my store, what's going to happen? It's going to get dirty. He says, you know, the same problem I did. Calls him back two days later. He says, make it 120000 No. I finally got the deal for 60000 bucks. In this particular yeah. case, I know he couldn't sell it. He's tried a couple of people. 
he needs to get his money back ASAP. Mm-hmm. And bang, I turn around and buy it. So it's basically psychology, a lot of psychology. It's a lot of psychology. It's getting into people's head and, you know, learning how to play a poker face. Oh, this is a great thing. You actually, I wanted to ask you about that. So, you know, on on the phone, you don't hear the poker face, but, you know, I, I saw you on the show. And how do you hold poker face when you're in front of someone? What you got to realize is because the liquidator is one of the only television shows that's not staged, meaning that whatever you see basically happens, it's point and shoot. So everybody says, Oh, every time you screw somebody, they, they, you know, and you make money on TV, how do they react? Well, most of the time, a lot of these guys keep coming back. So you got to remember they're making money off of me at the same time that I'm making money off of them. Um, uh, one of the things you have to remember is, um, that when they when they come after you uh sorry when they when they keep coming back to you they know they're making money but where i sometimes got screwed a little bit is because they knew that once they set the camera up and they get everything in motion they know i got to sell it so even though i'm still making money if i had a little extra time i tell you something right now and then i would be getting a hell of a lot more money out of the guy than i had to so they could take advantage of the situation and why not i would do the same thing Although I always made money on some on most of the deals on the show, you got to remember that was a bit of a hindrance because then if they knew I bought something and they made me an offer, I pretty much had to take it because if I didn't, we would have a, wa- a day sort of wasted in filming. But overall, um, you know, why wouldn't you? If I knew that this guy had to do it, I would be hammering him a lot harder than I had to. So because I didn't know what they were going to offer me and I didn't even tell them what the deal was, I wanted to make sure that even when we were filming that we got it done and we got it done right. So they're taking advantage of my situation as I have of theirs. But you have to know, it's like that, that old adage, you know, hey, I'm trying to sell my house or I'm trying to sell my car. Yeah, you're trying to sell your car? Yeah, I want 10000 for it. Yeah, I'll think about it. Well, don't think too long because I do seriously have somebody else. You know, are you lying? You're kind of bullshitting, but you're also looking out for your pocketbook. Absolutely, I understand. So, have you have you ever thought about that you will be a star of a reality show that it will be picked up running in so many countries worldwide? I, I had no idea. In fact, uh, local Rabbi Weinberg here, I told him I was going to do this show, and he says to me, "Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? What are you doing? You're going to reveal all your secrets. Don't do it. Don't do it, Jeff. You're crazy. Don't do this." And I said to him, Rabbi, I'm doing it. Four years later, or three years later, in 91 episodes, he says, you know, Jeff, I walked down the street, they recognized me. You, this is crazy. You did so bad. <laughs> and I said, I told you, Rabbi. I told you. And look what you got. You got a whole bunch of free mattresses for Passover at my cost. He says, very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, some people, you know, as you negotiate, know, you say, like, small lies, and, and now they see it on TV, so they actually see that... You know, and and you actually see what they bought. You know, sometimes you bought from someone you know now exactly the amount they bought it. Did you hear any feedback about that? In a negative way or a positive way? Um, doesn't matter. You know, just uh. You know what? I, I, listen, at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. And people, you know, the show put a lot of people in business, and they all thought they can do it. Um, you once you build the relationships, and that doesn't happen overnight. You get to know who, why, is what. You want to make sure if you're going to flip a deal, you want to leave room on the plate for them to make money. If there's no guilt to be made, I'm telling you right off the bat, they're not going to come back. You can, you can what I call, take advantage of somebody and whip them really good. And if they don't have any money, they tell you what, they're not going to come running to the next deal. Um, I try to always pride myself in making sure that whoever I'm flipping it to, is there's enough dollars on the cents on the table. Because they're going to call you up too. So you do have to build that relationship and you have to build that trust. You know, you only hear about when somebody doesn't do well. You don't hear when they do really, really well. One of the episodes, I bought a bunch of electronics, and we were setting it all up. I ended up, I paid about 15, just under 15000 I flipped it for pretty close to 45000 I thought I did really well. Well, the guy that bought off of me did well over 110 But he had the buyer. He had the thing. And you know what? Do I care that he made 50000 bucks in two days? No. You know, I wish I would have been had, had his buyers, and I wish I would have done it. But, hey, listen. In t- less than 48 hours, I put $35,000 clear in my pocket. That's a good one. I tell you some bad ones, you know. So, I mean, uh, the principles of buying and selling what I call shit, drunk, it's the same principle when you're buying a house, a building, 
it, it, it all applies. And it doesn't matter if you're negotiating on a $15 million building, you're trying to get this for a deal. You're, you know, if it's for future development, you're, 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 you know, you're putting your money out for this. It's the same, same, same principle. And how do you work the side of the mindset? You know, there are like, th- sometimes, sh- like we say, shit hit the fan, the fan. So, uh, you know, you, how do you, you go from thrill and rush of a deal to sometimes, you know, low and up, ups and downs? Any successful entrepreneur, if you look at their history, they're all a little bit what I call, you know, and not uh, without putting a bad dimp connotation in it, a little crazy. ADD, ADHD, your mind is, comp- when I go on a holiday with the family in Prague or wherever I go in Europe, I'm walking down the street, I'm looking at stores that are closing. I'm always looking at op- an opportunity. Most people go, oh, look at how beautiful that statue is. I look at that statue and want to buy it, you know, so... You know, I, 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 everybody wants to go to the Louvre in, Mon- in Paris. And my wife says, why are you crazy? I said, why? She says, well, you got to appreciate art. I said, you know what? Forget looking at the art. I want to buy this art. I can't go in there. Why? Because I, I look at what I could buy and what I could sell. But that's just my head. So, you know, I'm in the Louvre on the phone trying to do a deal with a guy in Canada. You know, so my mind is, it, it, it doesn't stop. It's all in my head. And I keep continuously, I'm always looking at the next opportunity. And... You know, the guys who can sort of maybe control it and get proper management are the guys that are doing the five and six billion dollars a year. You know, uh, for me, every deal, like I told a guy the other day, he's a real estate agent. He, as a matter of fact, he sold my house. His commission is 150,000 bucks. And I said, you know what? You got all these expenses. Like, yeah, he says, exactly. I said, I don't care how much money you make. But I tell him, he goes, how do you do it? I said, I tell you what, if I could do 10 deals in a day and make a thousand dollars a day, that's pretty good. You know, if I next day, if I only do half of that, that's only 5,000. The next day I do none. So every deal I have, I look at each deal, you know, on an individual basis and as to how much, you know, I could possibly make. Amazing. Amazing. Great. You're giving great insights. I want to go back a little bit back to negotiations. So, you know, this is, I think business owners are always uh, struggling with negotiations. Can you have, give some maybe possible tips or your thoughts about how best way to negotiate in order to, like you said, get a win-win situation? You know, I'm going to answer this very unpolitically correct, because if you were to answer this politically correct, I'd be lying. The first thing is, is like if you're a boxer, you go into a ring, you want to know who your opponent is, what his strengths are. If he's got a left hook, that's good. If you're negotiating, you have to also know who you're negotiating against. Uh, if you're dealing with a Eastern European, they're very hardcore and Eastern Europeans, you know, they say what they think. I mean, it comes up, they don't care. They don't, they don't pull any punches. If you're dealing with a, you know, a guy from India, you know, they're going to, they're, they're going to beat you up as much as you can. You know, if you're dealing with a Palestinian, if you're dealing with a Muslim, you know, this is, this is centuries of negotiation. So you come over here, we do things here in, in North America. Like I call it like a, like cowboys. It doesn't work that way. And you have to remember when you're dealing with someone who's been negotiating for thousands and thousands of years and they come into North America and take advantage of a situation. Why? It's just because it's, it's just natural. You know, nobody pays full retail. If you pay full retail, you're an idiot. So you have to know who you're, who you're dealing against. Dealing with Nigerians. Uh, these guys come in. You might as well start off at $200,000 if you want to get 10 grand. You know, so... Sometimes it's setting the price a little bit higher than what you expect, and you know you're going to get beaten down, so you, you do this, so it gives you a little bit of a buffer. Sometimes, forget it. It doesn't work. But at the same time, you've got to remember who you're dealing with at, at, at every time, because ultimately, uh, if you don't, you're an idiot, you know? Great, great, great tip. You know, know your opponents. Very important. So, you know, one of the ways to, we say, to 10x your business, to grow really fast is having employees and for you like you said it's a 24 7 business you know around the clock new deals things are going uh and one of the things you need employees and good people so h- how do you choose your right the right people to work with you the problem that we have here in north america is you know we're a society where it's more it's not what you can get it's it's what you, it's not what you can give it's what you can get and it's very difficult to find. And that's not just here. It's all over the world. So someone who you, you know, you, when you select somebody, you got to make sure, listen, you want to work here. If I call you at eight o'clock, answer the phone. If you can't handle it, don't work here. And if, you know, 
but ultimately, uh, that's the hardest part is to find reliable people because nobody gives a shit about your business more than you do because ultimately, it's, you know, your dollar, you know. Um, if you pay your employees a little bit more than normal, that, that doesn't always mean that they're going to be loyal to you. Uh, you have to be careful to not hire anybody that's smarter or smarter than you because the next thing you know, you got your own competition. Uh, so I, I try to get people. I try to treat them well. I try to pay them fairly well. You know, sometimes giving them a pat on the back and, you know, giving them a, a dinner gift certificate makes me, it makes a lot to these guys. Uh, but it's, it's, it's difficult to work in, a, in an environment like us because as we speak right now, you know, we have our regular business and I just bought 20 containers of a television show and we're scrambling to find spots to put the stuff in. So yeah, I saw that sometimes you're all, you know, your store is like on the top, everything, you have no room to move. And I'm old school, you know, I yell at people <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and if you can't handle it now, everybody, if you did it the old way, you know, listen, you know, I had a guy yesterday, you know, I'm screaming at the phone and I'm yelling at him because he did, he made it a stupid decision. Well, I can't help it. You know, then I hang up the phone and I feel guilty and I phone him up. I said, listen, I don't, I'm apologizing, but you know, think about what you just did. You just cost me a $300, you know, instead of just doing what I told you to do. And you said, yes, now what you do. But what are you supposed to do? Send out a memo and tell people this? I mean, everything's become so by the book. And I'm not saying you can't be by the book, but life doesn't work by the book. You know, it's perfect to write it down, but we'd like, you know, but it doesn't work that way. And, you know, uh, by any means, you, the person who you bring on board, like I bring in people from India. These, these guys from India are very loyal, very loyal in people because, you know, they don't have a buffer. They don't have... Uh, they don't have it. So they come here and they're going to please you in every way that's possible. Um, you got to have, have, find people like this. And sometimes it means going through a lot because tell you something, when I call you at eight o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night or six in the morning, talking about the next deal, that's so much for, too much for some guys and they can't handle it. But anybody that's ever worked for me and that's quit, I always say to them, no matter what you see, what, what you do, I don't care where you work. When you remember me in 10 years, you remember everything that I told you isn't what is is reality you know i'll tell you how it is but this is what it is and you know what most people have come back and said you know you're right you know you might have treated me like shit i don't treat you like shit i treat everybody good but it's old school mentality and i say bring in young people to teach you what's happening today like look at amazon for example amazon exceeded walmart in sales this year or last year it was amazon employees are making very very good money look at walmart employees they're not making good money now, if Walmart said, hey, we could take an Amazon approach, maybe we could exceed Walmart or, you know, Walmart could exceed Amazon again. So you still got to be an up to what's going on. It doesn't matter on a big scale or on a small scale. It's the same principle. Absolutely. And, and, and I think you being a straight shooter, old school, whatever you call it, is part of your success. You're, you know, you say it in your face. And I think, you know, we're talking about Israelis very successful in, in business. It's because we're straight shooters. We, we don't go, you know, we, we say what they say. It is what it is. And this is, I think, part of your success as I see it. Um, so you were talking about Amazon. So you touched the internet. And I know that, uh, you know, as I've seen you at least in the, in the first, second season, you were, were, you know, skeptical about the power of the internet being able to, uh, you know, online auctions or bring clients. Uh, on the other side, I, I, I saw that you know you, you're now today. You've launched uh, a great website and great you know lots of activities online. So how do you see the internet? Um, as you said, you're old school, but how do you see the internet uh, helping your business to grow? Do you know, I, I t I'll touch on something about an Israeli story. I have a, a friend of mine. He was on a show. William Kaminsky, Russian Jew, very old school, uh, from an area in Toronto, a rough up upbringing. Two weeks ago, a guy came in, right actually right off the boat, I call it, from Israel. And he beat this guy up. And I'm standing there watching. And William comes over. And William's got a, he says to me, he says, what the fuck? He says, I can't deal with this guy. I can't deal with him. He says, this, is, this is insane. I said, William, you're working for me today. Yeah? You're getting paid by the hour, right? You know, commission? Yeah. And what does he say? Well, look at the way he talks to me. William, are you kidding me? You're afraid of this guy? Why are you afraid of this guy? Go out there, tell him your bottom price. If he doesn't like it, tell him to leave. That's it. So this is it. Go somewhere else. But don't let it get to you. Why are you taking this shit personal? He's just negotiating the way he knows how. And you think you're any different? 
So go back out there, shut the fuck up, and get the job done. He calls me later. He says, you know what? I did it. I said, yeah, and? Did you make the sales? Yeah. Did you make me money? Yeah. Well, first, did you make me money? That's what I care about. But, you know, ultimately, <laughs> don't take it personal. If he does it, if, he, if he's personal about it, you don't like him, tell him to get lost. But he wasn't, he wasn't cutting you down. He wasn't making fun of you. He wasn't making fun of you because you had no hair and you're fat. He told you he's negotiating. And he's, what, what's wrong with that? He says, yeah, you're right. So what's, what's, what's the problem? But to ask your question, there's not, and one Israeli that I haven't done business with, anywhere in the world that, you know, there hasn't been money left on the table. So uh, it's always worked out. The internet is a, uh, you know, I try to keep my website pretty plain. I don't want it to be too luxurious. Don't know if that's always the right uh, decision. Um, you look at somebody's website that spent a lot of money and has done, you know, done, you know, miracles on it. It's okay. Um, but we don't want it to make it look like we're, you know, a highly overpriced shop. Now, Amazon, on the, other, on the other hand, you know, they would disagree with me. I, I, I try to keep it pretty simple, pretty – we have so much inventory going through our system. But, you know, this is a day and age. I mean, look at the CD, DVD industry. Ended pretty quick. Everything's changing. Everything's going online. People are buying – I have a friend of mine right now. He's got an operation in Canada. He's got one in Vancouver and one in Toronto. He says, Jeff, he says, I'm making more money selling sofas to Amazon than I am anywhere else in the world. I now opened up in North Carolina and a place in Vegas. I barely sell to retailers. I'm selling more money on Amazon and I'm making more money. So I think that's the, you know, the wave of the future. I mean, everybody's creating apps. I mean, people are making millions on just some crazy ideas, you know, uh, maybe one day they're going to say screw this and they're going to start charging people tax to use the internet, you know, and that might slow it down. But right now this is a wave and it's an economy of scale and you take advantage of that situation. Uh, the best is to, to young people today, you know, 15, 16 years old, they're going to school. They're in, uh, this is completely different. You know, when I was in school, we we just had a computer and we're learning MS-DOS. If you don't keep up what the young people do and what they want and what they need, and you just go with the old school way, you're never going to grow. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, one of the challenges for you is since the, your inventory keeps on changing really, really fast, then sometimes by the time it's online, it's already sold and it's gone from your store. And that's what you just made is a point that people don't understand. Everybody thinks they can get in this business and they think they have a deal. If you have a good deal, do you think you're going to post it? If you have that good of a deal, I mean, it, we do post it. But the point is, if, you're, if a guy's trying to unload you 10,000 cassette tapes, he may have a complete inventory. He was going to try to send it to you. It's just like the stock market. The guys who uh, do the IPO, the guys who get all the stuff going and once it goes public, they've already made their money. Then they're going to sell it to the schmuck out there that wants to buy what's left over. I mean, sometimes you hit it and you get lucky, but come on, how often does that happen? It's the same thing in this business. I keep telling people there's no such thing as a free breakfast. If you expect a free breakfast, there's going to be something in return. It's the same reason if you're looking for deals. Now, on my level is, yes, we will buy a deal. We'll try to put it online. And we try to offer it out at a cheap price and, you know, we blow it out that way. Yes, it does work. And yeah, I mean, we sell air conditioners and people who come in locally, they'll come in and buy. And yeah, we're doing, you know, internet sales, obviously. But just think if I'm offering out a deal online and if I have to categorize and put it all up and put all the work in there, what's the reason? Is it because I can't sell it? You know, so old school word of mouth and telephone is still still there. But I don't say not putting stuff up, up online because how do you know when you buy 20 trailer loads of different product? You know, what do you got in each trailer? Are you going to inventory it? It's, it's, it's easier when you're dealing mainstream retail, you know what you're getting. But in my business, I never know what we know what comes. And you just have to prepare to, you know, get your feet wet, so to speak, and have skin in the game and go for it. Awesome. Uh, I, this is, I think that's one of the, when the show opens, it says you never know who gets in the door and what deals is going to come next. So this is really, really the, the, the biggest, I think, challenge, but it's also the biggest thrill, right? The next, the next guy, the next deal coming through the door. There's a buyer so, just about for everything, but yeah, people always, one of the things, biggest mistakes people make is they see a deal and they offer it to their family. Oh, I'll take one. I'll take two. If I listened to what everybody told me to do, I tell you something right now, I would have gone broke a long time ago. I don't listen to anybody that, you know, because people who don't know what, what it's all about, like within your own circle, you know, they'll tell you you're crazy. Stay away from that. 
you just got to make the right decision based on what you think. And sometimes it's pure bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So Jeff, uh, what, what was your biggest surprise ever, you know, when buying something? Well, on the show, if we we're going to go to the show, I bought a bunch of uh, equipment uh, to, to grow and manufacture, well, I'll say tomatoes, but obviously it's not tomatoes, it's marijuana. So I did a deal. I bought about eight or nine trailer loads of this chemicals and lights and fans, and I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I had not a clue what I was doing. So I talked to a friend of mine. He says, are you kidding me? $35,000, that's it? I said, Sheldon? I tell you something, if I pay $35,000 of something, I don't even know what the fuck is other than a fan. And if I lose money, I'm going to kill you. He said, Jeff, I'm telling you, buy this deal. Let me tell you, customers that have been coming to my store for years, 20 years, you know, husband, wife, daughter, look all normal, you know, church going people, blah, 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 are buying the stuff like crazy. I didn't have one thing left over. What did I tell you? More people smoke pot than you think. And I tell you, I, if I ever get a deal like that again, I'm all over it. So that on the show was one of my biggest surprises because I had no idea that I would turn $100,000 in less than a week. Oh, this is like amazing. Amazing, but it, it, it's, it's something that you won't normally like get. It's not something oh, that goes... Hey, if, 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 if I didn't talk to somebody there, it's almost hypocritical where I tell you don't listen to anybody, but then the next day I, did, I turn it around. But when you also have to take your audience too. I mean, you have to figure out that. I mean, sometimes talking to people is what I have to do. But in that case, you know what? It panned out. I got lucky, and I did well. Great. That that was a great uh, episode. So, you know, I, I want to ask you lastly about, you know, family lifestyle. How do you juggle the fact, like you said, there's a deal at 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m., family vacations. How do you... Uh, juggle everything because this is one of the struggles of business owners and, and entrepreneurs that you know sometimes they don't have support from the family and, and they need to put their time on in business I hate to tell you this if you t if you were to take some statistics on every successful businessman in the world uh, how many of them had divorces and separations etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, if you don't have an understanding wife you're not going to have an understanding life and uh, you know you, I just can't turn it off you know I can't. And my wife is not all that happy about it. And uh, I can't tell you, it's not an easy ride on, on, uh, on the home front, but you know, reaping the rewards is what it's at. And, uh, you know, I could be anywhere in the world. And if I get a deal, and I take a deal, I'll do it. And, uh, that's, it's not easy. And you, and you know, you have to make your sacrifices and your sacrifices is, you know, if you want to work nine to five and play baseball on the weekend and, you know, don't tell me that you don't have any money. You know, that's, that's unfortunate, but it's, it's always, you know, you have to be in it. And if you're not in the game, you know, you're not going to have any pain and it's, it's not easy. So you have to have someone that's pretty understanding. And, uh, uh, when you go at it, no, uh, your personal life, you know, something has, some sacrifice has to be made because there's not, there's only seven days in a week. So no, you have to be prepared to give it all you got. And, uh, there's not an entrepreneur. I mean, t tell me an entrepreneur. I mean, let's, you know, look at Donald Trump. I mean, uh, whether you like the guy or not, he was posed a question, uh, about two weeks ago, um, by Hillary had how he had went bankrupt in uh, three casinos. Now I wouldn't have answered the way he did, but how I would have addressed that issue is you're right, Hillary. I did feel bankrupt. He answered it by, yes, I went bankrupt and made more money. Unfortunately, that's not the right answer. You're right, Hillary. I got out of, my, out of bed in the morning. I saw opportunity. I went for it. And three out of 100 of my businesses failed. I'm still running at about a 97% average. Yes, it didn't work. It would be nice in life if I got up out of bed and every deal worked. But you know what? I still went for it. And most of my businesses, or 95% of my businesses, are still succeeding. What he, by uh, how I believe that it was a sort of a bad implication sometimes when a business goes bankrupt they then call up guys like us and we make them offers and they end up buying it back and then reselling it although it's totally legal it's it's sort of gray area but yet you ha you can't knock somebody for that you can't knock somebody for that statement you tell me warren buffett you tell me anybody that's successful hasn't lost money on a deal i'll call you a liar because you don't know until you do it and it's it's a continual focus on trying to to make it happen there's always an obstacle that sometimes hits you at last minute so 
you know, yeah. Uh, any entrepreneur that tries, you know, is, he's going to fail. And, uh, you know, it's just part of life. Be nice to be 100%, but it's not always the case. It's how you come yeah. out of it and how you rebuild. Absolutely. And you, you, you talked about, uh, uh, you know, the hours you work and, 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 you know, the family. And Warren Buffett, we're both of us sure that he works long hours for sure, although he could have, you know, retired years ago. And I think it was Mark Cuban said that uh, entrepreneurship is not a job, it's a lifestyle. And, and I would agree with that fully. Great. Uh, Jeff, I want to thank you for, for, you know, being here on the show and, 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 you know, sharing amazing tips and ideas and being a straight shooter. I think everyone can, you know, business owners and entrepreneurs listening to this podcast can learn a lot. So I do appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I want to thank, uh, we do have a lot of uh, great fans in Israel and uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, <clears throat> uh, a little bit of a peek into what's going on. I'm in the process of negotiating for a different uh, show and we'll see where that goes, whether it happens or not. But um, what I did was I pulled my cards out and let's see what happens and where it goes. But for a Canadian show that to go as far as it did, it was, it's pretty amazing. And uh, again, it's uh, again, I, you know, a lot of good fans. We have, have had lots of visitors come out of Israel and uh, it was cool. So, you know what, thank you everybody over there for watching and uh, anything else, just give me a show. Thank you. Now I'll tell you, for me, the show is inspirational. So when I watch that, as an entrepreneur and business owner, I, I see you, how you handle, how you negotiate. I learn from that. So it's not just about the fun of watching it. It's also, for me, inspirational, educational. So I'm waiting for the next 91 episodes. I'm going to give you <laughs> something really, really funny. We hired, they hired in last season when we went to India. We hired a, what's called a production assistant. And he was from, he's, he's, a, he's Hindu from Punjab, India. And uh, he says to his brother, he says, I got a new show. I'm working on a new show. And I, this was before he met me. And I said, he, the, the brother says, oh, and he's a lawyer uh, and a professor at the University of, um, in, uh, I can't think of the name, University of Punjab or whatever the university was called. And he says, uh, what's the show called, the, the professor? He says, The Liquidator. He says, The Liquidator? You're on that show? He says, do you know that we use some of the, the YouTube t- tapes and we pirate the liquidator and we use it for negotiating in some of our classes here. Can you believe it? I said, are you kidding me? He goes, no, I'm not kidding you. True story. And I thought, that's just unbelievable. So, yeah. So, that's, so, yeah. so, so now you know that you're also, inter- uh, you know, uh, inspiration and, and, and a mentor for entrepreneurs worldwide just to see you, how you think, how you handle, how you negotiate. And you shared a lot of that on this call. So I do appreciate it. And thank you very much. Thank you so much, and it was a good talking to you, and uh, I'll let you go. My phone's been ringing off the hook. I'm in the middle of trying to close another big one here, so uh, I will. Uh, <laughs> Great, Jeff. So I'll see you soon. Thank okay, you. Buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the 10X Your Business podcast with Itai Paz at www.itaipaz.net slash podcast. We will be back with another great podcast next week. If you're digging what you're hearing, your next step is to go to iTunes and in the search box, type 10x your business. Click on Itai's picture and go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. And if you're feeling generous and you want to help other business owners and entrepreneurs like you to find this podcast, then give us your rating and review. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.